bomb dia mis amigos all right i got some comments here from john sweetman 442 but i want to show you something i just saw this and it's weird yeah. youtube is weird sometimes man i don't understand here it's got a picture of wedding 105 1919 here I reload the refresh the page and uh, I don't know what's going on man YouTube is just so doggone weird sometimes but anyways I don't know if I've never seen nothing like that anyways anyway who cares all right so um, right there's wedding 105 1919 but anyways and there's a picture of him right there but that's not his comment I don't think I don't know what's going on. Who cares? Anyways, uh, John Sweetman, uh, he's got a lot of comments here, and I appreciate him. So I'm going to address a couple of these comments. Let me read them. He says, I know nothing. That's fantastic. What say you? Are you willing to die for your king? Well, it doesn't really matter if I'm willing to die for my king. Um, the fact of the matter is my king has died for me all right and no servant is greater than his master all right so Jesus has laid down his life for us that we might have life eternal Jesus he says I hear Jesus will be back when Islam kills all the Christians on earth lose your life so you may take it up again I'm not sure uh, what you're referring to here. Um, what are you suggesting that we that we kill Muslims or or will you let Muslims kill us? Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying here, but the fact of the matter is that uh, Islam is not a religion of God. It's it's not a real religion. It's not supported by the Bible, and it's interesting here. God says, "If you have respect of persons, you commit sin." Let me see, let me narrow this down a little bit. If you have respect to persons, you commit sin. So. To, I think you're giving too much credit to Muslims. There's only two classes of people, if you will, the saved and the unsaved. That's it. Uh, of those that are not of God, they are the enemies of God. They that are not of God are the children of the devil. Can you answer my comments? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Appreciate these comments, John Sweetman. Are we not all children of God? We'd be lucky to have lived to 100. Yeah, yeah. 100 years old, that's that's quite a life, man. You know, and I, I, for me, I can't worry about that. I'm just lucky to be alive today, right? Um, but no, we are not all children of God. Um, whether you're meaning lowercase g, I mean, that. Well, let me just address this lowercase g. That when we read that in the Bible, the lowercase g, don't confuse that with an actual God. There's only one God. There are not two gods. There are not multiple gods. There's just one God only. That's it. All these other so-called gods are imagined only they are not real they do not exist there is only one God one God only alright and we are either children of God or children of the devil alright and let's see in other words probably a multiple uh, verses I could point to but let's go. 
let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. All right, so there's a distinction made here between the two. We can go to John chapter 10, or no, I'm sorry, John chapter 8. And Jesus is talking to the Jews who claim to be uh, descendants of Abraham. And he calls them, uh, he says to them that you are of your father, the devil. They are children of the devil. All right, so we're not all children of God. All right, there's, there's probably a, um, more verses I could point to. It's pretty consistent all throughout the Bible. Um, in Matthew 13, when Jesus is giving the parables, he says, The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. All right, again, there's a difference between the saved and the unsaved. We are not all children of God. All right, and no more judgment. Explain the second death. Okay. Again, I'm not for exactly for sure what kind of answers you're looking for. I'll just do my best. Okay, so explain the second death. So it is appointed unto man once to die. And then after this, the judgment. All right, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. All right, so you're either going to live forever or you're going to die the second death. All right, let's see if we can find some verses to support that. So it is appointed once to die, then after this, the second death. All right, in Revelation, we get uh, a few mentions of the second death. And of course, the second death is the judgment of God. All right, so we can go to uh, Daniel 2 before we get to Revelation. And if I'm remember, no, it's not Daniel 2, it's Daniel 12, isn't it? Oh boy, I apologize for that. Let's go to Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's the second death. So on Judgment Day... When it's the end of the world, if you're not saved, the judgment of God will be death. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. I mean, really. Um, you think of the wages of sin is death, right? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, and uh, let's see, what is that? The sin leads to death. What is the verse I'm thinking of? It, this is explained uh, numerous times. Um, the sin has reigned even unto death. Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh... You know, there's so much. Um, for the law of the spirit of life is in. I'm sorry. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There it is. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. And the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Let's just. Uh, open that up. First Corinthians 15, such a amazing chapter, really. But thanks be to God, which is which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So the second death comes at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. So when this happens it's the end of the world and all those who are not saved are destroyed forever 
just as we read in Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So at the end of the world, death and all those who follow death will be destroyed. All those who are not saved follow death and will be destroyed with death. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So the second death is what happens at the end of the world. All right, you've heard of, you remember the verses where it says, "Fear not them that can kill the body and not the soul. Fear them that can kill the body, and not the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both." soul and body in hell and that's God God Almighty okay don't be afraid of you know the bad guys coming to get you be afraid of God he's the one that has all the power all right he's able to cast you in to the fiery pits of hell right and he's also the one that can give you everlasting life so in Revelation here it talks about the second death and chapter 2 it says he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death and this again is in reference to the end of the world judgment day All right, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years clearly obviously this is talking about right now right now we are a kingdom of priests right now we are a holy priesthood right now we reign with Christ and right now we are partakers of his resurrection and right now the second death has no power over us whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die right think about Jesus um, when he was at the well with a Samaritan woman and the Samaritan woman asked, or I'm sorry, uh, Jesus asked her for a cup of water. And she's like, oh, I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew. This is forbidden or whatever. And Jesus said, if you knew who was asking you for a cup of water, you would be asking me for the water that I give is a well of water springing up into everlasting life and she's like oh I'd like some of that water let's see if I can find that real quick John chapter 4 whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life all right so when we have that water that's we have eternal life you know when we are born of the spirit of god we have eternal life right just like what we read in chapter four we also read in chapter three but when we are born of the spirit of god we have everlasting life we shall never die and so the second death has no power over us right now and I could open up Revelation chapter 20 where it says and judgment has been given to them meaning judgment has been given to us we are kings and priests unto God we sit on thrones on heavenly thrones and judgment has been given to us and that is the judgment of eternal life and this happens all this happens before the final judgment at, on the last day when the end of the world comes and those that are not saved are destroyed the judgment for them is death we have an opportunity today to have the judgment be given to us for eternal life all right on the last day there's only going to be one final judgment for all those that are not born of God and that is death and that's what we call the second death 
All right, and again, in Revelation 20, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So not only are um, the unsaved going to die the second death, but death itself is going to be done away with. So there will be no more death after the judgment of God. It's amazing. Again in Revelation 21, but the fearful and unbelieving abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All right, again, this is not a different uh, event. This is, if you connect the dots, this is all talking about the same exact moment in time when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. And we are lifted up, our enemy is gathered at our feet, and all of our enemies, including death and hell, sorrow and pain, suffering, all that is going to be done away with forever. All right? Okay. No more judgment explained the second death. I'm not sure exactly if that answers your question I hope it does if not please um, you know ask question leave comment whatever the voice in everyone's head that's the problem yeah no that's I wouldn't no I can't say that I can't I can't agree with that so you think about uh, what Jesus says here when he talks about the toilet He says uh, in Matthew 15, he says, Do ye not yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the toilet? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, these are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. So all the wickedness of the world stems from the human heart. All right, It's not from the voices in your head. That's all imagination. Vain imagination. The trouble is the human heart. Now the good news is that Jesus has destroyed this temple that we're in and rebuilt a new temple with a new heart a pure heart and an everlasting temple and we will be transformed into that everlasting temple on the day he comes in the clouds of heaven and we are uh, changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye transformed into our glorified bodies all right so jesus has done it all for us I mean, he's done it all. He laid down his life to be the perfect offering, the perfect sacrifice to God. All right? He has destroyed this body that we're in, and he has built it back up into a perfect body. He has done it all. I mean, let's face it, we can't do it. We can't even come close to doing it. The good news is he has done it for us. And really, you know, all we have to do is believe in Him and follow Him. He's the one. He's the one that's done it. If we believe in Him, we will follow Him. So again, it, it all comes down to faith. It really does. It just, it's always been about faith. It's always been about faith all the way back from the beginning to the end. Here, let's do it. I guess we could do it this way. I'm going to Hebrews 11. You think about this, man. The very first verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now you think, is faith important? Uh, <laughs> if you ever read this, have you ever noticed that? Look at this. On the right hand side you can see all the mentions of the word faith. Yeah. 
It's always been about faith, man. It's always been about faith. All right, so I guess to go back to the Muslims, that doesn't have any bearing on anything. You think about Matthew 24, when it says, You will be hated of all nations. It doesn't say, You'll be hated of the Muslim nations and they will kill you. No, that doesn't say that at all. You will be hated of all nations. Oh, goodness. I thought it said it. Right there. Verse 9. And, and this is not talking about the Muslim nation. This is talking about you shall be hated of all nations. Right? Of all nations. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Okay, so this it's not about Muslim. Now you're having respect. Too much respect for one religion that is entirely vain has no biblical significance other than the fact that they are not saved there's only the saved and the unsaved right. so whether they're Muslim or whether they're just flat out atheist it's the same thing they are children of the devil you're either a child of God or a child of the devil. There's no in between. There's no categories of saved people, and there's no category of unsaved people. When every Christian is dead by Muslim hands and the world is without Christ, he'll be back. My opinion. Well, that's a. It might. It's your opinion, uh, absolutely. But it's not. Uh, it doesn't square with scripture because clearly it says except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sakes those days shall be shortened all right so and this is not about <clears throat> well just all the christians are just going to get killed and jesus is going to come back and you know before they all the christians are killed jesus is coming back that, no 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 that's not it at all and it should be very obvious i mean reading matthew 24 mark 13 luke 21 should be very obvious that wars and these types of things are not a sign of the end time these things these wars are just things that must happen it's called here the beginnings of sorrows we go to uh, Mark 13, Luke 21 even. Let's, let's see if we can find something here, a uh, parallel verse here, where uh, in your patience possess ye your souls. I love that right there. These be the days of vengeance, that all things are written, which are written may be fulfilled. All right, so these things... Let's see, let's go back up to, or no, I think we want to go to, I'm sorry, we want to go to Mark 13, don't we? Let's go to Mark 13. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, but the end shall not be yet. All right, for such things must needs be. The wars and rumors of wars you know, Christians getting killed, that sort of thing. That's all just things that have to be. All right. For such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. And remember, the context of the question is, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And it's not, you know, people getting killed uh, at all. It's not about violence at all. It's about faith and the deception in the world that is keeping people from believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the sign of the end of the world, or the sign that we're close to the very end of the world. The sign that we are near the end is all the deception in the world. Not people getting killed. It's not what you're seeing on, um, you know, Dan Rather's, you know, CBS, uh, CNN, Fox News. It's not what you're seeing on TV. It's the deception of the world. 
Okay. And believe me, Dan Rather is not going to broadcast Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. He's not going to broadcast, hey, we're, we're seven days out from the end of the world. That's never going to happen. You know, you're not going to you're not going to see Peter Jennings say, "All right, we, we're down to about 17 Christians, folks. Hold on to your seats." Yeah, that's not going to happen. Whatever you're seeing on TV, it's nothing but confusion and vanity. That's it. All right. So John says, "But he's not dead." Right. Jesus is not dead. And YouTube Studio sucks. Nine seven eight says, "Then how is it a sacrifice if he's not staying dead?" Uh, you know that's somebody. That's that's a great comment. Great question. All right. Well, Jesus laid down his life. Okay. So he offered his body as the perfect sacrifice. All right. So he died. For the sins of the whole world, he has became he has become the appropriation of our sins. Let's see if I can find. Uh oh, let's go. First John, chapter two, verse two, and he is the appropriation. Pro p. Uh oh. Pro not, I'm saying I'm saying that word wrong, ain't I? Pro Piation. Oh goodness sakes. Propitiation. 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 Okay, so anyways. Um the action of propitiation. <laughs> I can't even say that word. Alright, never mind. Or appeasing a god. Right. He's the propitiation for our sins. Alright, he's the only way. That our sins can be forgiven and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world all right so it is the will of God that we all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ all right? so he's not just died for us he's died for everybody and it is the will of God that everybody believes in him you know, unfortunately that's that's not happening so Jesus has laid down his life for us he has become the perfect sacrifice for us and he has destroyed this temple like I talked about uh, earlier I think it was the first video I did this morning where um, Let's let's go to First Corinthians. Uh, oh, wait a second. Yeah. Oh, both these verses, right? And First uh, Corinthians six and in First Corinthians nine, uh, talk about the temple, which is your body. Is the temple of God? What know ye not? That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. There's another verse too. Let me find it here. Um, uh, well, I, I don't remember now, but it doesn't matter. Uh, in John chapter two, it's very interesting, okay? Because all these Jews, they were ignorant, thinking that the temple was a building. And you got all kinds of ignorant people today. It's incredible. I just I can't help but wonder: Do these guys not? Maybe they haven't gotten this far in the Bible yet. To me, it just it strikes me odd, because I actually read John chapter two before I was even a believer. And it just seems to me just way too obvious that Jesus is talking about the temple of his body and not a building the Jews who were dumb and confused thought Jesus was talking about a third temple being built but Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body and so when Jesus offered his body as a per 
perfect sacrifice to God, that's the temple of God that he destroyed and then built back up in three days. All right, so when he was talking about destroying the temple and building it back up, building the temple, he was talking about the body, his body. And so he has died and rose back to life and rebuilt the temple and ascended to heaven. And so we that follow him will do the same. So we will die and then be risen back to life and transformed into a rebuilt temple a temple that is much greater than the temple that we're in now all right what was that verse um, oh let me go back in first corinthians 9 do ye not know that no that's not it come on What's the What's the verse I'm thinking of? Um, I apologize here I got to think. There was another particular verse that I was looking for. That's it. First Corinthians 3. That's it. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you so that was the point of the the video on oh, not that one the third temple video that I made is that there is no third temple being built that Jesus has already destroyed the temple and built it back up and we read how dumb the Jews were in in John chapter 2 and we got a whole bunch of dummies today Oh, the third temple's going to be built. They have no understanding whatsoever of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Whether they be saved or not saved, I can't tell. But the, it's obvious. What I can tell is that those people have absolutely no understanding of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And I'll give you an example of how embarrassing embarrassing these people are embarrassing really right here Adam 1984 battle for the third temple the prophecies of Daniel by Bill Cave now, this stuff is embarrassing it's embarrassing it really to see people this dumb so many years later after I mean when the Bible is very clear Adam 1984 come on buddy you're making a damn fool out of yourself Jesus destroyed the temple and built it back up now if you're a Jew just admit it you don't believe in Lord Jesus Christ doesn't he but these phonies are pretending to be Christians and man if you are a Christian if you really are and you're that dumb you're embarrassing okay all right that's it for today all right now that my blood pressure is up I got some coffee in me I'm ready to go